So today we want to talk about feature flags and I'm going to do something similar like we did in the CD. Uh, we're going to go through the direction page and, you know, stop me at any point if you have any questions. Um, so, so let's start. So um, really basic, I'm going to skip all this and just say this in, in the TLDR fashion, we have feature flags which either enable or disable features to be active for specific users on a specific environment. Um, the, the way that it works is that it's kind of like an if or else in your code where you either meet a criteria or you don't meet a criteria and based on that you will get the feature or else you won't get the feature. Um, so that's just really simple uh, way of thinking about feature flags. The, the really nice thing about feature flags is that it's on, um, there's a few uh, really nice advantages. One of them is that it's in a logical view and since you basically create feature flags inside your code, they're very closely tied to your application. So the rules that you can set for an audience to see feature flags can be based on your application. Uh, and it doesn't have to be based on, you know, like IP addresses or some subnet or um, traffic routing, like in different deployment strategies. Here, let's say that you are, you created an application that lets you create playlists for songs and you want to identify specific users that have over 200 songs in their playlist as I don't know like heavy users. You can enable specific features just for that kind of user based on your application logic. So that's really, really cool. Um, and another really neat feature that feature flags has is that it is done in runtime. So you can change the rules at any given time on the fly without the need to redeploy your entire pipeline. So that's really powerful. Um, and it gives you the users, developers, a lot of flexibility. So that was just a TLDR for everything that was written here. Um, and we have a bunch of links on the direction page. So you can see the maturity plan, the issue list, the vision, uh, UX research documentation. And there's even a deep dive video, which is similar to what we're doing now, but it was recorded back in July. So it's always good to update but whoever wants can go back and, and take a look. Um, so feature flags was a super critical pillar in progressive delivery. It's one of the main functionalities uh, because when you think about progressive delivery, the idea is that you wanna make small increments of changes to your code, visualize them, get some feedback and then decide whether or not you want to expand um, the audience that gets it. So feature flags is a really neat way to do it because you really can control the audience, get the feedback and decide whether or not you want to continue rolling out um, the feature. Um, so this was super critical when we were just the progressive delivery team. Now that we're the combined release team, I think the priority is gonna go down a little bit because we mentioned that CD is going to be top priority of the team, but we're not going to like completely ignore feature flags. So feature flags, I think we'll take a second chair um, and compared to what it was up until today, but I still see us consistently delivering a big feature every quarter. Okay. Um, so what's next and why? Um, it's funny, this was actually deprioritized due to the latest realignment, but uh, we recently added a functionality to create user lists, which um, is a fancy way to create user IDs. So we have a strategy and we'll talk about strategies in a minute, what it means, but um, we have a strategy called user ID, which lets you for specific users enable that specific feature. So we could have a feature that's only enabled for Nicole and Arit and then for everyone else is disabled, but when, which is really nice when you have a small set of users, but when you have a ton of users, adding individual users is a pain and you may want to reuse that list. So let's say you enable something for your QA team. You don't want to keep copying the same names. You can, you want to have a list that you can reuse. So we introduced the concept of reusing user lists. Um, but sometimes when you create a new user list, it may be a subset or a minor changes between lists. Um, so you want to copy and paste users from one place to another. So this feature was what, what we were intended to do, which was allowed to copy the lists so you can duplicate user lists and then make fine tune changes 
um, so it's just easier to use. Um, that was this issue. Our current maturity plan isn't viable, so it's pretty early. Um, we may be at a point where we can um, advance this, but this is definitely needs some user research in order to, uh, to decide that. Um, I have a maturity plan here listed out in a similar way that I did continuous delivery. So on the top here, you can see epics, and here you can see a bunch of issues that are related to that specific epic. The way that I think of epics here is like a bucket. So the first bucket is feature flag strategies. And so a strategy is different rules, like we mentioned, that you can enable the feature for. Um, so we had a really big refactoring that we worked on this year, which allowed to support multiple strategies per flag and also multiple strategies per environment, but also separating different strategies for different environments. So really giving you a lot of flexibility. That was, I think, six months work of, uh, of work that we did. Um, and then we added, um, so just to, to mention which, which strategies are supported now, we have on and off, we have user ID, user list, which we already talked about, and we have percent rollout. Um, now percent rollout, we also enhanced on that. So percent rollout in the past would only work for users that are logged into your application because it was based on the user ID uh, and it didn't really work for anonymous users. Now, that's a really uh, big limitation, especially when you wanna do A-B testing and A-B testing is more around volume of users and not necessarily specific users. So we introduced um, this flexible rollout strategy that allows you to set not only the percent of users, but also what you want to base your stickiness on or consistency. Uh, is it based on user ID? Is it based on session ID? Or is it based on random? So that also uh, opens that up to anonymous users as well. Um, so those are complete. And we have coming up in terms of strategies also uh, rule-based uh, rollout strategy, I don't remember what that is, so let's open that up. Okay, so this basically lets the user do whatever they want. You can do it based on tiers or based on domain or based on geolocation, anything that your application knows, you can create your own custom rule and then have the flag enabled by that. Um, ability to exclude feature flags for specific users. There's actually a way to do that today. It's kind of a hacky way but this is just um, nicer. So similar to the fact that you have user list that you can enable, you can just use that same user list and disable that feature with them. So it's, it'll be enabled for anyone but. Um, and there is a way to do that today. And this one is really interesting. Uh, it's called constraint-based. And this allows you to combine several strategies together. So um, you can see this is what Unleash has uh, and we have kind of a mock-up that I created, which is pretty ugly, but it kind of conveys the message where you can, uh, you have a button under the strategy where you can add a, a constraint, and then you can add another strategy, which will do an end between the two um, strategies and combine them. So you can have a constraint-based strategy. Um, and this one already, Andrew uh, Wade, and, and this is ready to go, but I think it's gonna be a while because I'll talk about priorities in a minute. Um, then we have feature flag context with GitLab, and this is actually gonna be a main focus in the next coming year. Um, I had an analyst review um, last week, I'm not gonna mention which one, but it was around feature flags and A-B testing. And one of the main points when I described the vision and what we have supported today. So one of the main points that he had mentioned was that the biggest benefit of using feature flags within GitLab is the context, because we can build everything into the pipelines. We can bring all this information from different areas, from the source code, from the issues, from the MARS, um, and it brings a lot of benefit for the users. So um, we recently moved feature flags to core this is going to be the context is still going to be a paid feature uh, but besides being a paid feature it's also something that is 
really great for GitLab and it really shows the benefit of a single tool application. So this is the Epic uh, and underneath it, you can see I have currently five uh, different issues. One of them is semi-complete uh, add ability to associate feature flags with contextual issues. Um, so today, if you edit a feature flag, there's an area where you can link issues. So you get the link. Um, then we have add ability to associate feature flags with contextual in Mars. So that's similar. You can, similar to how you link today to NMR, you can link the feature flag itself. Um, and then epics, it will be the next one. Um, we recently added requirements to GitLab, so this was added as well. And then this one, which I'm super excited about, and I really hope to get to this in Q1. Um, this is actually something I talked to the design team today. Uh, this is something that our competitors have, kind of, but we can make it so much better. Um, and that also talks about the benefits to GitLab. So um, launch darkly, which is a main competitor that we have, and I think it's a leader. They're a leader in the space. They have what we call code snippets. So today in GitLab, you have the UI that shows you the, the feature flag. And there's two different identifiers that are actually tie this feature flag to something in the code, because at the end of the day, the feature flag has to be written in the code. Um, it's the ID and the name. And in the feature flag section itself, um, maybe I'll just show you today. Um, let's go to feature flags. So you can configure here uh, the URL, the instance ID. You need to link all of that. And the name of the feature flag is what's actually tied into the code itself so that it knows where to call it from, okay, inside the repo. Um, but when you edit a flag, you have all this metadata about the flag, but you don't have any connection to the code. You need to kind of copy this down somewhere, or open another tab to the code and work side by side. But it would be really convenient if we could just show you exactly where the code is directly from GitLab or from the feature flag itself and that would let you make any um, changes that you want to do. So let's say, uh, let's say you want it, you're doing, you're, you have a feature flag, and the feature flag has to do with something with the UI, and it changes the the background color to green. Uh, but then you decided that's not the color you want. I'm just making this super simple. This can be like a thousand different examples. But then you decided you wanted to change the color from green to red. So. So you could just go into the code and just change it, whether it's a hex value or, or a, you know, just text. You could just go into the code and change it. In LaunchDarkly, you have the snippet, but LaunchDarkly doesn't have the source uh, code. So you have to go back to the other tool, find this code, and then change it. So it's still inconvenient. We can just make it so much more accessible to the user and the way that I was envisioning with this was very similar to the way that we see code diffs today. Um, so you open the feature flag, you get exactly the code that this um, flag has. You make a change, it's, it's logged just as any other MR change. And then you get the whole GitLab experience from, uh, from the code con uh, context. So I'm really, really excited about this one in case you didn't tell, you can't tell. <laughs> Um, and then we have get feature flags to enterprise grade. This has a bunch of different areas. Um, this is actually very similar to everything that we're dealing with with, with release uh, orchestration and segregation of duties and everything. So basically there's protected environments and unprotected environments and we kind of need to figure out how we can protect those environments also from someone toggling uh, flags. Um, so this is like a bunch of, of, of things that are behind it. Some of them are behind the scenes, like incremental interval of polling or the architecture. Some of them are really around permissions, audit logs, uh, protected strategies, et cetera. Um, this is gonna be kind of slow <laughs> because this has a lot of different thinking, but we're already tackling this one, create protected feature flag strategies. 
So um, realistically, I think we'll get around to this in Q2 if we don't start working on this in Q1. Uh, but this is definitely something coming up very soon. Um, move feature flex to core. This is actually complete, so I need to update the page. And the next two, I couldn't really find a good bucket for them, so they're on their own. Um, the first one is A-B testing based on feature flags. And this is a whole topic, and it, it's, it's one that we've done extensive research about. Um, we created this as an epic, and there's a lot that we want to do. Uh, recently, Shinya created a uh, POC um, for A-B testing, and since it's not such a large effort, I think we'll also pursue this. Uh, of course, I would like to have a ton of resources and do everything. So, so of course, everything um, is kind of in the balance, but I would say those are the main three that are super important that we're going to work on. I don't want to say in the immediate future, but definitely the protective strategies, the A-B testing, and, um, and the contextual things, those are top priority, which is kind of saddens me to say, because the next one is also one that's dear, near and dear to my heart, uh, which is create feature flags as an issue type. And this may actually be a first iteration towards A-B testing. I'm not sure. It really depends on the design that we come up with. Um, but the idea here is that today, feature flags, as I showed you here, is kind of um, under operations in its own area. First of all, it's not very intuitive to look for feature flags under operations. So we're pretty sure it's not in the right place. We're not sure where the right place is, maybe CI, CD, maybe somewhere else. Um, but there's also a lot of things that are missing from feature flags today. Um, I'm going to point out some, but there's a lot more that you can read up on. First of all, there's no area to collaborate. So if your team creates a feature flag, there's no way for you to write, I did this, I chained this, whatever. There's really no place for discussion that we have today, uh, which makes it really difficult. And especially when we're talking about A-B testing, collaboration is key. And a lot of people are involved in those A-B tests. I think a lot of people are also involved in uh, feature flags, but it didn't come up as, a, as much as it did in the research for A-B testing. Another thing that is missing here is who created the flag. For example, when was the flag created in the first place? Like there's a bunch of missing metadata that we don't have existing today. Um, I created a competitor analysis um, I, I know I'm jumping a little bit, um, in, linked in this epic. So there's a bunch of features that, that Launch Darkly has, and we either have or don't have them. Um, but some of them seemed like very basic. So we mentioned, I don't know, we mentioned the create date, for example, but I want to talk about two different ones. Um, let me see. I talked about this today and I found everything. Okay, feature flag maintainer. So for example, let's say I'm an SRE and I'm in charge of production, but I had nothing to do with this feature flag. Someone on some team created a feature flag that they saw their specific uh, flag feature. And I don't know, the feature flag is giving me problems. and I don't know what to do with it. Can I turn it off? Do I need to talk to someone before? There's really no way for me to know that today. So um, Launch Darkly has something very similar where you have like someone as an owner of the flag. So an, an SRE can know who to contact in case there's something wrong. But that really looks like the signee to me, um, which is very similar. Um, and then another one was um, tags. So if you can tag different feature flags in different ways, it just makes it really, really easy to, um, to know what's going on at a glance. Um, either you can tag an environment or you can tag, um, I don't know, let's say, it's a, let's say it's feature flag that's enabled for premium users or I don't know, different scenarios. 
Um, also, once you have many, many feature flags in your system, it's a nightmare to manage. So this is like a pre work to one day when we can do sorting and filtering and other stuff. But what would you sort and filter by? So this is uh, one of the options is doing it by labels. And that's kind of how we do uh, sort sorting and filtering today and issues. I, I'm sure that you do that on your day to day basis. So I thought it would be really cool if we could import labels into feature flags. And when I started creating this list, I was like, oh man, this sounds like an issue. <laughs> Why can't we just reuse what we have in the issue and just have feature flags as an issue? So that's what this specific um, issue uh, is talking about. And that's creating feature flags as an issue. The, the monitor team recently uh, added incident as an issue type. and the release management team was talking about doing this something similar for runbooks. So this is kind of along that same line where I think more and more things are going to become issue types on their own, first class citizens. Um, and so that was what I was envisioning, creating a new feature type. The downside about it is that, okay, we can create an issue type, but we still need very specific things for feature flags. So we still need to import the strategies. We need to import the toggles. So there's a lot to think about in this specific issue. I think it's gonna be a lot of work. There's a question whether we need to start top down. So just copy an issue and then, and then you know hide it behind the feature flag, start adding all our stuff, wait for it to be mature and then start rolling it out or the other way around, add labels, add just the, the create date, I don't know. So that's a discussion that we need to still have with uh, both design and with uh, engineering to see what the right approach is. Um, but I definitely see the value, especially when we're talking about context. So if I have an issue type of feature flag and I have a code that links the MR to the feature flag, everything just becomes so much simpler. I don't wanna say free because Andrew doesn't like me to say free, um, but you get all of this great value that we don't need to create from scratch, like even filtering and sorting and everything that we have today and get that we can, you know, make use with this new issue type. So I think it's uh, the right way to go. I don't know how that fits in with all the priorities and the lack of resources, but we will figure that out. <laughs> but those are definitely the top items that I see in feature flags. There's a lot of small issues that are not mentioned here, but those are definitely the ones that are worth mentioning. Any questions? Um, no, no questions. I, this was awesome, by the way. I, I love the, the table for the um, comparison with the launch darkly features. That's really, really helpful um, when looking at like our progress there. Um, and also, I think the, the top two that, that you mentioned uh, for me was the contextual code with GitLab's ability to edit as well um, in the web IDE, I think is a powerful combo. Um, so I can see why you were excited about that one. Um, and then also the AB testing based on feature flags, I think is a huge win in terms of how people deploy, deploy features and, and test um, their usage. So I, this is really, um, this is really great. Thank you for this. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get to the feature <laughs> flags as an issue type sooner. <laughs> yeah. So one more thing about A-B testing and why I think it's really great to work on besides it being like super uh, valuable and, and, and great. Um, there's two things that, that are, will, will add value to us. So one is A-B testing. The persona is very different from the persona from feature flags. Feature flags is usually developer SRE role and A-B testing brings a bunch more personas into the release stage, product managers, product designers, marketing, sales, it brings all these new personas. So um, that's besides being extra seats, it brings so many more people that can use our stage. And I think that's really, really great to expand on that. Um, and then other thing that I wanna say is that it ties in very nicely to other stages in GitLab. So when you think about A-B testing, it's very similar to post-deployment, which we talked a little bit about in, CD, in the CD direction, because basically what you're doing is you're rolling out a feature, you're getting feedback, and based on that feedback, you're doing something. So you're either increasing the rollout or, or you're 
rolling back. So mm -hmm. in that sense, it's super similar. We need to connect to metrics. We can bring the metrics into the dashboards, to the environment page, to automation, and we can just do so much with this. So it's really along the same lines as, as the other thing. So, so it's very consistent and, and that's why it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So I'm skipping to the competitive analysis because we kind of talked a little bit about that. Um, analysts, there's a lot of hype around feature flags, uh, progressive delivery, A-B testing, specifically now. I don't know that, I don't know if you've seen, there's a lot of interest also internally in GitLab. And even on A-B testing, we have a lot of opportunities to, to dog food. So this is really in a focus uh, in the analyst landscape. And that's why I think that's why we cannot deprioritize this completely. CD has to be the main focus, but we cannot lose track of uh, feature flags as well. Um, yeah, so top customer issues, we have the permissions, which we kind of touched on. Um, top customer issue is audit trail, uh, audit logs. So again, around having to know what's going on in your system. Um, today we have partial auditing, but we don't have like changes to strategies. We were very focused on the refactor. So we kind of lost some of the audit capabilities along the way. And so we need to make that up. Um, this is super critical for enterprises, but not only. Um, so it's important to get to that too. Top internal customer is really great because we just got a community contribution that did this, which added a webhook for feature flags, which um, uh, sends a webhook every time a feature is toggled on or off. So you get chat notifications, you can tie that into pipeline events, really, really cool effort. Um, and dog fooding effort. So we have some teams using um, feature flags. Now that a bunch of our team members moved to fulfillment, I, I uh, I had them commit to using feature flags and be our ambassadors there uh, in terms of dog fooding. Uh, but it really depends on how much we capabilities we can bring to the table. Uh, so A-B testing at the moment is very, very lean. It's not good enough for them. So we need to uh, address their concerns and then they'll be able to move over to, to dog food, our own solution. That was, and we're at time, but um, I do wanna <laughs> give you you know, time to, to discuss or ask questions or anything that you want. I don't have any questions right now. Um, I I think I'd like to dig into um, understanding the dog fooding efforts a little bit better because I, I know there's been a lot of discussion there in how we use flags internally. So um, uh, I'll probably have follow-up questions. Yes, absolutely. So there's, there's two different feature flag um, methodologies that we used in GitLab. One of them is Unleash that we, our solution is based on. And the other one is Flipper. Mm -hmm. Flipper is Ruby based and that's why it was, and it's performing, which is why it was selected in the first place for our internal use. Unleash was used as a, as the, was selected as a product one because it supports more languages than just Ruby. Um, and we kind of need, need to nail down the performance issue um, when you think about what GitLab can do at scale, um, we're going to need to support, LaunchDarkly supports currently like 2 trillion uh, feature flags a day. Um, if we want to get there, we need to do quite a bit, bit of architectural um, yeah. work. So we're not yeah. there yet, but definitely in terms of our enterprise readiness, we have to work on that. Um, so we need to figure out the pain of the engineers and work on that. I did get a commitment from our team that we will use for our own features, the Unleash ones. I don't know if that happened, that has happened, but I'm gonna uh, trust you to, to enforce that because I think we're, we can be our own ambassadors here and fix right. stuff while we look that come up. Great. Sounds Ooh. good. Thank you for this. Yeah, I'm going to post this on our channel. Um, and if anytime you want to that deep dive into any of these issues, you know, feel free. We've okay. made so much progress. The team has done a wonderful job this year. Um, I've also, we've also recently instrumented um, 
the use of feature flags. So this is interesting. I was just working on a graph for this now. Um, not this one. <laughs> um, so now you can see uh, feature flag toggles on a monthly basis. So you can see that we're increasing. This is where we're not done yet. So I think this is okay. Um, so we have this instrument. We definitely see people using this. Uh, Andrew actually created a daily one. If that's more interesting for you, I, I just made it monthly so that's easier for me to digest. Um, but what's really interesting in this is that you have two places in GitLab where you can uh, toggle feature flags from. One of the, them is the index page and the other one is the edit. So if we go back to where was my project? Is it this? No. No, I don't remember. Uh, but one of them is when you edit a flag and one of them is in the index page. And we've had a lot of discussions whether we uh, need to change the, the way that people, like the, the upper toggle, but it seems like the majority, vast majority of people are actually using the index page and not using the edit page. So we definitely can't get rid of it. We need to figure out things around it. So there's a lot of interesting insights here. Cool. Yeah. Well, great. I look forward to, to diving in a little bit deeper and, and I'll um, touch base with you if I have more questions. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ari. Bye.